The Rat Patrol was an action-adventure television series that aired on ABC between 1966 and 1968. It follows the exploits of four Allied soldiers, three of them were American and one a Brit, who were part of a long-range desert patrol group in the North Africa campaign during the Second World War. Their entire mission was to attack, harass, and just wreak havoc on Field Marshal Rommel's troops that were in that area. With their guns always blazing, they had a sweet vehicle that took them across the desert just looking for action. Young boys just sat in front of the TV and ate it up. Now, it was one of the first shows to ever be completely filmed in color that was about the Second World War. The reason was it was kind of tough to cut in between and use stock footage from the war that would be black and white, and this made it impossible to give a seamless look to a production if you were jumping from stock footage of black and white to color. But Rat Patrol did everything in color, and the series just popped off the screen. Rat Patrol was actually a troubling production to produce because of its setting. It had ballooning cost and just miserable filming conditions. Shooting began for the pilot on the dunes of Yuma, Arizona, not far from where they filmed Return of the Jedi. The temperatures often reached 118 degrees. Equipment broke down. Jeeps wouldn't keep running. They had trouble all day long. The production then hoped to move to Camp Irwin in California, but the Army pulled out of that deal at the very last minute. Finally, the entire cast and crew shipped off to Spain where they hunkered down for 17 weeks of filming. It's said that they actually lived in a town that didn't have running water, and the town smelled like rotting fish and sewage. Many of the actors in the show shed a lot of weight. Actors actually came down with dysentery, and they also got all banged up from doing stunt work. Rain and windstorms also added trouble into the production and just wreaked havoc on the set. When the show became a hit, not everyone was thrilled of making more episodes. Fortunately, they got to move the production back to the United States. Now, the foursome that comprises the show are three Americans and one Brit. Anyone who knows the Second World War history realizes that that's not exactly how it went in North Africa. These units there were British, and the people in the United Kingdom took offense to Yanks taking credit for such actions on TV. The TV show was pulled off the air in Britain. The adult Australians who knew history were no fans either. One of the main characters, played by Christopher George, he always sported a hat similar to those worn by Australian soldiers, and they took offense to this too. It was moved to a Saturday morning lineup where it was mostly seen by less historical people, mainly kids. In its first season, the Rat Patrol was an instant success. It siphoned off about a million viewers from the Lucy Show, placing it in the top 30 for the season and making a strong enough showing to be renewed for a second season. During the 1967-68 season, it faced some really tough competition like Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In and The Man from Uncle, which were in the same time slot. Christopher George played the main character, Sergeant Sam Troy. He was the unit's commander. He was a gritty yet compassionate leader who wore that hat that we were talking about, the Australian-style hat. He used a common tagline saying, Let's shake it, expressing his urgency to leave or to hurry to do something. Gary Raymond played Sergeant Jack Moffat. He was an expert on the desert and of the local Arab tribes which inhabited it. Lawrence Casey played Corporal Mark T. Hitchcock. He was also known as Hitch, and he was a college man turned soldier. He was always seen chewing bubble gum, and he was occasionally known as a ladies' man. Justin Tarr played Private First Class Tully Pettigrew. Now, he was the unit's wheel man. He was the best driver around, and he had gotten these skills when he grew up in Kentucky running moonshine. 
He's the only member of the patrol who wears an Army Regulation steel helmet and a Regulation uniform. Eric Braden plays Hans Dietrich, and he's the German officer and the patrol's main nemesis. By the end of the series, it becomes pretty clear that although he's a cunning opponent, he never stoops to the cruel methods of his fellow Nazi officers. I think probably the most visual remembrance of the TV show is the jeep jumping over the sand dunes as seen in the opening credits and multiple times through the series. As you watch this stunt being performed, you see the people in the jeep just getting thrown all over the place. I'm surprised that they even survived those jumps. There was actually a coloring book issued for the series, and Topps Chewing Gum Company released a series of trading cards that were published in 1966. The total number of cards was 66, and they had still shots from the series on the front and text about the stills on the back, along with parts of nine different picture puzzles, which could be a symbol to show the show's main characters from the show. In 1967, Christopher George, who played the unit leader, Sam Troy, was involved in a frightening accident with his fellow cast members. Their jeep turned over while making a sharp turn in a lake bed. Now, George took the brunt of the injuries, he had tissue tears, neck injuries, and damages all over his body, including his heart. He healed from these injuries and went on like everything was okay. But in November of 1983, he had a sudden heart attack at the age of 52. In an autopsy that was performed, they found that that chest injury that he received during the filming of Rat Patrol actually caused damage to his heart and caused scar tissue to build up that caused his heart attack. Quite a few years later, another cast member, Gary Raymond, suffered a broken ankle when the Jeep overturned on him filming episode 27, Take Me to Your Leader Raid. The filming of this show was absolutely brutal on both the production staff and the actors. Now, they took three episodes and combined them to create a movie called Massacre Harbor. That sounds like a pretty awesome action flick, but it was basically just three episodes that were edited together in a movie. It was released overseas in markets like Japan and Scandinavia and did very well in those areas. Now, during productions in this era, they would often substitute the real equipment that was actually used during the time of the Second World War with other equipment that was made to look much like the original equipment. Some of the Jeeps that you see in the production are definitely clearly post-war Jeeps, and the German armored vehicles were actually American patent tanks painted in desert sand colors. The machine guns used by the squad were unusual too, because during the first season being filmed in Spain, the producers obtained several fixed wood stock versions of the Spanish Star Z-45 submachine gun. They had gotten this from the Spanish Army, and they apparently tried to imitate the look of the Thompson 45 machine gun. That was changed later in the first season when the Thompsons were actually made readily available to the crew. There were a few episodes during the second season where the storyline required the temporary absence of cast member Tully. They used three different characters who took turns rounding out the patrol until he returned. A Rat Patrol soldier named Cotter, played by Whitey Christie, is shown being hit by enemy fire and slumping over the machine gun during the opening action sequence of the pilot episode. His death resulted in a vacancy in the four cast members, so that's when Moffat was added to the team. Rat Patrol appeared on television between 1966 and 1968, and there were 58 total episodes split up into two seasons. The first season had 32 episodes, 
and the last season had 26 episodes. I think that this show still remains a thrilling way to spend 30 minutes in front of the tube. Unlike most action adventures, Rat Patrol clocked in at just half an hour, which meant our heroes had to get right into the action. Us baby boomers used to love this show. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.